Vice Mayor I hope. And uh, with me tonight we have Mayor Trello who's going to tell us a about how things are going in the city and how bright our future is. So without further ado, I'd like to bring Mayor Pam Trello. Joining us for the State of the City Address, of course, joining me tonight, Vice Mayor Maxwell, Commissioner Andy Amoroso, and Commissioner John Sardi. Before I start tonight, I want to thank all of you for your support for this commission, and I pledge tonight that my colleagues and I are going to work really hard with your help and that of our staff to make this city one that we'll all be proud to call home. If you're at all like me, remember finally the place where you spent your early childhood and high school years. It was the best place in the world. The local hammer stand was the bomb. We left the house during the summer on our bikes, and some days we didn't return home for hours, and our parents didn't get nervous or upset that we were gone. I've heard from quite a few of you who grew up here in Lake Worth that used to go over to the beach and spend endless days surfing and swimming and nights playing and having fun. That time was the best time. There are also people who think the best time of their lives was when they were raising small children. And for those of you that lived in Lake Worth then, it meant raising children in a modest home, sending your kids to our neighborhood schools and attending services on the weekend at our neighborhood churches or synagogues. That time was the best time. There are people here tonight from every generation, and we all feel the same. The good old days really were the good old days. But even those that were great times, there is no time like the present. And hopefully, it'll only be topped by the future. One of my favorite songs I used to sing to all the time growing up, Fleet with Beth, Don't Stop Thinking About Tomorrow, right? But an appropriate theme for us right now at City Hall. Your commissioners and I are thinking about tomorrow each and every day. And more important than that, we're thinking about future tomorrows. Your future. Our children's future. My future. Our future. Some of the information I'm going to give you tonight will be shocking and will reflect the realities that we're working with. As much as we love this city, we're plagued by poverty, low property values, and the need for sustainable job creation. Last year's State of the City Address was no picnic by any means. You asked me to leave this city, and I cannot in good conscience move this city forward without diligently, thoroughly, professionally, and respectfully assessing the city's needs in its entirety before recommending or voting on any issue. The homework we've done in the last two and a half years has positioned us for growth and recovery and shaved a decade off of our delay in realizing our full potential. But what does that really mean? Well, while our neighborhood, uh, neighboring municipalities were growing and fixing their infrastructure and investing in new technology to meet new requirements for funding. Hello. I thought you needed your ears pierced to finish and investing in new technology to meet new requirements for funding, this city was not. When monies became available from the state and federal governments, their projects were shovel ready, but ours were not. We spent decades without comprehensive land development regulations. Our staff utilized antiquated equipment to try and get jobs done. And when our roads needed fixing, we just paid them higher and higher until you can tell no difference between the height of the roads and the sidewalks. We also failed to budget for maintenance and infrastructure in just about every area and project we dove into. From our roadways to this beautiful beach casino and even Snow Island, questions like, who's going to keep this safe? Who's going to clean it? And how are we going to maintain these conditions were left unanswered. 
More importantly, money's been never budgeted for the overarching question, how are we going to pay for all of this? The good old days were full of politics when the city should have been focusing on what each and every one of us has to do in our real lives. Work hard. That's the focus of this commission, and our staff is working hard to meet these expectations. In response, we've gained the respect of our peers, our local municipalities, the state and even federal government are now rooting for us, and they're opening up the lines of communication and creating pathways to help us restore this community and turn it into the jewel we always knew that Lake Worth was. So despite some of the challenges that you may hear tonight, please, it's not all doom and gloom. I encourage you to focus on what's being done on every level to combat our problems, remove our disincentives, and give our residents and business community a new era of good old days here in Lake Worth. How about that 20th Annual Street Painting Festival this weekend? Yeah. Yeah. in our beautiful downtown Lake Worth. There's even something in the wind. I don't know, did you uh, see the front page of Palm Beach Post this morning? <laughs> Baseball team, or team is coming here to the Lake Worth area, again, just outside of our jurisdiction by the college, but it certainly would make an impact. As with the rest of the nation, Lake Worth is still struggling to recover from the Great Recession, dealing with unfunded pension liabilities, and are just trying to make ends meet. Just like in our personal lives, we must have the ability to make repairs to our infrastructure, as well as to fund the services that we come to expect, such as Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office, Palm Beach County Fire Rescue, garbage collection, parks, recreation, and a host of other amenities residents want, need, and quite honestly deserve. Property taxes are based upon land values minus any exemptions allowed under Florida law. The simple analysis is, Lake Worth does not have enough functionally valued or taxable properties to afford itself. There are over 1,500 foreclosures in Lake Worth, along with another 2,000 properties that are vacant. Almost one half of the residential units in Lake Worth are rental properties. For a city located between Palm Beach and Boca Raton, it's shocking that the property tax revenue in Lake Worth is only $5.6 million for 2013. That's a significant indicator that we're highly undervalued. Now I want each and every one of you to really understand what that means. Our general fund budget to pay for all the needs and services of our community is roughly $30 million. Our property taxes only pay for $5.6 million of those services. Where does the other $24.4 million come from? State revenue sharing, permits, licenses, parking fees, and more. Those don't generate nearly half of that. So where has the money come from to pay for that $24.4 million in the past few years? Wait for it. Wait for it, yes. <laughs> Imagine if we didn't have our own reverse osmosis water treatment plant or our own electric utility, like almost every city in the town. How would we have ever balanced our budget? But that came on the backs of each and every one of us in this room, including some of the most impoverished in our county. Yeah, poverty in Lake Worth is astonishingly high when compared to other cities in Palm Beach County and the U.S. as a whole. The poverty rates are less than Bellevue, but higher than Riviera Beach. Many of you have heard that before. And of the city's 35,087 residents, approximately 11,165 of them live below the poverty level, according to the latest data provided by the American Community Survey. Now, despite these gloomy facts, there are some opportunities. We have many accomplishments over the last few years. Beach redevelopment, this casino project, the Bryant Park boat ramp, the renovation project of the Lake Worth Municipal Golf Course, the Snook Islands Restoration, Sunset Ridge Park, and I'm happy to say that Lake Worth was the only city in Palm Beach County to get a 5% reduction in our Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office contract, saving the city nearly $600,000. We now have a monthly newsletter 
Has anyone got that? Their utility bills? Our newly web, uh, designed website scoring over a quarter of a million visits with over 600,000 page views from 135 countries since its launch in June of 2013. City commissioners adopted an economic development electric, uh, electricity incentive rate program to encourage job growth with municipal boundaries. And in order to get that rate, these businesses have to create 10 new full-time jobs and add 150 kilowatts of new load to the Lake Worth electrical grid. The City Commission passed an ordinance to bring Lake Worth Electric to rate parity within the next five years. That means that this commission created a law that forces the city to have the same rates as FPL as we figure out together whether we want to reinvest in our own utility or sell. Now, how do we get to rate parity? This is going to be accomplished by a combination of strategic improvements, including reducing the amount of money transferred to our general fund budget, as I mentioned before, and our new wholesale rates with our new temporary power provider, the Orlando Utility Commission. Remember that $24.4 million figure I mentioned earlier? We're now starting to wean our city off our electric money and are learning to live within our means. In fact, the last few years, we've already reduced electric rates by 12% on both residential and commercial sides and will continue to do so during every budget cycle to adhere to our new law. In other good news, our recycling program disposed of approximately 2,480 tons of recycling last year. The city brought in close to $25,000 for that material. I want to thank them to keep up the good work. And here's the news. We finally started seeing an uptick in the property values for the first time since 2007. Our renaissance fueled by investments made by families, entrepreneurs, young professionals, retirees, and businesses. It's going to be a great year. It's going to be on location next to the Atlantic Ocean with two I-95 interchanges and a close proximity to the Palm Beach International Airport that will also assist in our ascent into the future. We have to improve property values and quality of life while recognizing and protecting our unique character. And at the same time, we must provide effective and efficient services. This is a really big job, and one that will not be completed all at once. But we have to start now to make this happen. We have to capitalize on our natural resources, arts, culture, history, architecture, and great neighborhoods to provide community for all. For the last eight years, we've been working to develop the land development regulations known as LDRs which, based on the city's comprehensive plan, preserve the city's historic character and recognize neighborhood patterns and natural resources while encouraging a vibrant economy. The LDR is the product of numerous public meetings of past and present commissions and boards and the consensus of over 98% of its members and staff. That, in and of itself, is a miracle. It's imperative to have a set of rules that are clear, concise, consistent, these LDRs help ensure that neighborhoods stay neighborhoods and issues of compatibility, buffers, landscaping, parking, lighting, traffic, and setbacks are clearly understood. Having these consistent regulations helps to make Lake Worth a more desirable, desirable place to live and work. And in the time since its passage, Lake Worth went from zero dollars in new investment to over $30 million coming in 2014, and possibly $40 million more by 2015. That's how you grow your taxes. <laughs> we can't talk about LDRs without talking about code compliance. Code compliance in all cities is a very sensitive subject, but here in Lake Worth, the laws that govern code compliance were not consistent in the past. This, of course, coupled with the collapse of the housing market that left over 1,500 properties in foreclosure, made it difficult to find responsible owners for delinquent properties. It made it really challenging for the code division to keep up with the demand for service. 
Well, this city commission has attacked this problem head on by adopting almost 40 new ordinances to rectify the inconsistencies in the law and give more authority to officers who address compliance issues. Adopted at the end of last year, these new laws are now being enforced. And we must have the commitment and resilience to keep the pressure on until all of our properties comply. I recently toured with the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office a bank owned foreclosure property in a residential neighborhood. You might have seen, and I hope you visit them afterwards, a video that was playing earlier before the State of the City address. Um, it shows a little bit of what I'm talking about. It's in a residential neighborhood. Not only was the property neglected, but squatters had taken hold of the home, and the proof was drug paraphernalia and signs of prostitution all over it smack dab between two family homes in a residential neighborhood. Families live on the street and long complain that the police were not able to enter the property and make arrests due to our antiquated codes. Not anymore. Together, we will create a vibrant, safe, sustainable community that attracts families and businesses, and our property values will finally reflect how valuable this city is to each and every one of us. We can no longer allow absentee landlords to utilize our city to enrich their bank balances. For so many years, people have purchased our dilapidated properties, have rented them out to as many people as they can fit in each unit. They collect the rates on a weekly basis and go back to their homes in the suburbs, leaving us to deal with the aftermath. Our codes are stronger now, we have the tools to keep our neighborhoods clean and safe. It's time to bring pride to all the neighborhoods of Lake Worth. Another big problem we've been dealing with is the aging infrastructure in this city. Infrastructure includes the network of roads, sidewalks, drainage and water and sewer pipes. We have not invested in these systems or maintained them as we should for the past 30 to 40 years. The result of this neglect is now showing up in the potholes and cracked roadways and broken water lines that affect our quality of life, as well as in the realization that some infrastructures like fire hydrants have never even been installed in some neighborhoods. The city's now been actively identifying all the infrastructure needs and is working to quantify what it will take to fix, repair, or replace them. This effort will rebuild the city for the next 100 years. The program you may have heard of is called Lake Worth 2020, and it's definitely still a work in progress. It's a very important and significant effort, though, so we have to be sure the city gets it right the first time. Funding for Lake Worth 2020 will be a mixture of grants, direct allocations from the county, state, and federal levels, as well as a potential voter bond issue. The goal is to maximize as many financial sources as possible to fix the problems, improve the quality of life, and keep the tax burden low. I've met with President Obama's new transportation director, Anthony Fox. I've invited recommended problem solvers to come look and make assessments of our city. I brought our infrastructure story to Governor Scott, the staff for Senator Rubio, Congressman Hastings, and Congressman Deutsch, and I have an upcoming tour of our infrastructure schedule with Congresswoman Lois Frankel, who sits on the Transportation Committee. And I do know that our Vice Mayor and Vice Mayor Pro Tem have also mentioned their campaigning for state and federal help at recent commission meetings. The city neglected its responsibility to our citizens for decades, and can we really afford to let them deteriorate further? I'm not willing to do that on my watch. We have as elected officials a responsibility to all of our citizens in every neighborhood to provide the same basic quality of life and infrastructure needs for everyone. The recent record rainfall showed the importance of the constant upkeep of roads here in the city. So many calls came in regarding potholes, and of course the local news media showed those potholes all over the place in photo and video. But folks, our road problems didn't just happen overnight. The streets didn't just open up. 
with only $500,000 in a maintenance budget for the whole city each year. Did you hear that? $500,000 each year in a maintenance budget over the years. Lakewood did not prepare for the future. So this commission has taken the first step to making our infrastructure a top priority. Well, we're aware that we cannot spend our way out of the problems we face in this community. I know that we must spend money to fix, not just mask, the infrastructure in the city. Our homes are a big investment, and we don't want to see the value of our investment go down and down and down. How many of you in this room own a home? Okay. You understand this philosophy all too well, right? You have a roof leak in your home, you call the roofer to fix the problem. You patch the leak in your house, stays dry for the next two years. Eventually, though, you're going to get to the point where you can either replace the aging roof or deal with the effects after each and every rainstorm. Now, it's not just the floor that gets ruined. You may have to deal with wet furniture, drywall, clothing, draperies. Additional problems such as mold and rotten wood may occur. If you continue to leave your home in this condition, eventually the value of this asset is going to go down to the point where it may become necessary to tear the house down if you neglect it for that long. It's the same with our city. We have to look forward to the future with the same enthusiasm as we all have in remembering the past. While we'll always have a system in place to address immediate problems, like I don't know if anyone's seen our new hot patch pothole filler. I think my commissioners out there were testing it out on the roadways. It's no more, though, than putting a band-aid on a deep cut, and although it doesn't address the problem long-term, sure, it's going to provide some temporary relief. If you have an issue with your roadways, please, 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 I recommend calling our public services department, report an issue, or email the location to our new road crew at lakeworth.org address or on our website. You can do it anonymously. Remember, we can't fill them if we can't find them, so please call us for the fastest results. And I encourage you to join me soon for the unveiling of our first official new roadway in an area where there never was a road before, 10th Avenue South. Please join me when that project is completed. You're going to be hearing a lot about that. The redirection of CDBG funds unused since 2006, sitting here in the city, helped make that roadway happen. It's just as important, though, that your city officials are fiscally responsible and can be trusted as stewards of your tax dollars and government grant monies. And we're going to make sure that you know that. This commission is doing the grunt work for the Park of Commerce, attempting to obtain the necessary rights of way. So when someone from the Business develop, uh, Development Board calls us looking for a site for a new business, we're going to be ready. We're going to have the right site for the right business, and jobs are going to finally be created here in the city of Lake Worth. <laughs> All right, now I'm giving you some insight into what's been going on in the city. Here comes the million dollar question. How do we bring in new revenue streams for the city? Along with eliminating the disincentives that we've been talking about here tonight, we have a plan for a brighter future, and we want to take stock of our advantages over our neighboring competition. Palm Beach County is the nation's sixth largest market for art. Art lovers and investors here spend over $90 million annually. Lake Worth is an ideal place to tap into this economic engine due to our location and our reputation as an artistic and creative community. A lot of local municipalities, you must read about it in the newspapers daily, they're trying to use art as an economic development tool in their communities. But we have a distinct advantage. Palm Beach or West Palm Beach may be where fine art is sold, but Lake Worth is where it's created. <laughs> Live, work, shop, and dine here, and this is so important where we're trying to attract art collectors and gallery operators. Last year, we saw the opening of the Urban Art Lofts, built out by the community of And that was on the concert with 20 community partners with neighborhood stabilization programs, the NSP2 grant funding. Now, these lofts provide much needed living and workspace for artists of all disciplines in safe, conveniently located, affordable housing, smack dab in the middle of our beautiful downtown. Now, although the development of these units adhere to a tight budget, 
The project was certified by the Florida Green Building Coalition and used materials that would ensure low utility and maintenance costs. And on a personal note, I love the way these lofts have enhanced the look of Lucerne Avenue to the west of City Hall. And in June 2013, the city, in partnership with the Community Redevelopment Agency, made an application for a grant from the State of Florida Cultural Affairs Division for a cultural facilities grant. The featured project is for the rehabilitation of the interior of the Shuffleboard Courts building into an art center. The goal is to transform the building into an active community space where people may send their children to attend classes, listen to late afternoon concerts with friends, or see local works of art. With its close proximity to the urban arts lofts, the building is a perfect location to serve artists and residents alike. In November of 2013, city commissioners approved a public-private partnership with the Living Arts Foundation. The foundation will make an investment of $1.75 million redeveloping the city-owned historic FEC train depot for the creation of the Ben Zeiten Center for the Creative Arts. functioning workspace for the production of large-scale art pieces from a Browns foundry to a kiln glass blowing facilities. The project will have a tremendous impact on the local economy. And in fact, an economic impact analysis provided by the Business Development Board of Palm Beach County estimates that $4 million will be injected into the local economy. These projects support city initiatives, of course, and reinforce that Lake Worth really is where art is made. And it also helps us to establish us as a vibrant community where visitors are attracted and local businesses can thrive. By using art as an industry cluster and promoting entrepreneurship in the city, jobs are created, revenues are generated, and people want to visit and, yeah, spend. Now is the time, folks, we've got to come together. This year, there will be no election to further divide us. We all need to stand as one community. We're not divided by politics. And by the way, Powell's, they don't have any politics. It's just all of us working together for the good of the city, supporting and encouraging one another that's going to turn the city around. We don't win by taking pot shots at our neighbors the elected officials of Bears and and our city in general. And anyone that does, I hope they get an earful from the unified voices of all of you that know that Lake Worth is the greatest little city in the Southeast. That's why they chose to live, work, and play here. I don't know if you realize this, folks, but we're getting our act together, all right? We're a city on the mend, and we are ready for prosperity for everybody, whatever that means to you in your life. And we might not all have all the answers, and I know we can't fix every problem in the city right now, but we have done the homework, and we've seen what works to revitalize other cities to create jobs and build strong communities. All right, we cannot live in the past. Don't forget, we can reflect upon the past, we can look back fondly upon the past, but we must look to the future if we're going to survive as a community. I am so with all of you in my belief in this city. I love living here, working here, shopping here, and being part of a wonderful, quirky, eclectic, funky, whatever word you want to use, city. I didn't grow up here, but my husband and I have come to call this our hometown. And I'm sure this was a great hometown back in the day. And I'm equally sure it's going to be a great hometown for generations to come. But now is the time to do the hard work and make this happen. We have to support our greatest investment by investing in this community. We have to replace where replacement is needed, repair if that's the prudent thing to do. We have to enforce the laws that are now on the books, and we have to work to support the arts our downtown and Dixie Highway corridors, and of course our beautiful casino and beach project. I just want to take this opportunity to thank the commissioners that have come before us. 
They too work for the good of this community, and we have many projects, buildings, and accomplishments for which we have them to thank as well. We have to share the common goal of bringing in businesses that will create jobs and in turn will bring in families and young professionals and retirees to revitalize this community. Tonight, we have some of our key departments here. I don't know, it's a little bit different this year, if you've noticed, set up around here. We also have Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office, Pat Silva, Lieutenant Moss of the Sheriff's Office. And they're going to be here today. today so that you will have a chance to talk with them directly and ask questions about maybe projects you've read about or issues that have concerned you or the new maps or the things that are going on in the city that you've been reading in articles over the last year or so. A lot of those key projects are represented in the staff that's here today. Please take the time to go to each booth and talk with them. You can also see, like I said, that wonderful video of watching since we enacted those codes how they're actually being utilized by the Sheriff's Office today in our code enforcement agency. So, so please keep that in mind and I hope you'll visit them. The past year we celebrated the centennial of the city and boy, what a celebration that was. I hope you all got to enjoy it. Why don't we all get together now, make a pact to make the next hundred years even better. And when this year becomes history, let our families look back on our accomplishments and see that Oh yeah, even back, way back in 2014, the residents loved Lake Worth so much that they worked hard to bring the city into the 22nd century. Albert Einstein once said, learn from yesterday, live for today, and hope for tomorrow. Oh, I have high hopes for the city, all backed by the progress that is finally coming to fruition. Please, Leave tonight with a renewed sense of hope for the city. Share it with your families. Share it from the rooftops. Share it with your neighbors. Our future is bright, Lake Worth. God bless you all.